Now, this theorem, its basic structure is quite similar to the previous one. The, the type of reasoning is very similar. Uh, the details are different, of course. But hopefully you'll be able to carry over quite a lot uh, of the baggage, the experience of the previous theorem to, to this one. Uh, the similarities in the sense, uh, you know, there's a chain of reasoning. Uh, these, these theorems are getting more complicated. So uh, I will try again to uh, uh, spell out the details. Um, I've only got 16 minutes left of film, so I'll, I'll try to get through it fairly quickly. Uh, and we'll go over it again probably uh, next board So, All right. So, as usual, uh, we'll uh, use proof by contradiction, okay? Now, the theorem, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, from previous session, theorem 5.13, uh, all CFG is undecidable, okay? And that's the language um, uh, where uh, you try to f find uh, grammars that uh, you know, for any, any given grammar G, uh, is there a Turing machine that decides whether that grammar can generate all strings, you know, given, given the string alphabet, you know, the input alphabet. All right, now, uh, so, you know, proof by contradiction, therefore we'll assume that this language is decidable. In other words, there's a Turing machine that uh, decides that language, you know, all that's pretty pretty standard and usual. And uh, we will use the existence of the Turing machine that decides this to help us decide this. Okay? So yeah that that's the, the yeah that's pretty familiar. The same same type of strategy. So uh, the the Turing machine that decides this we'll use as a component uh, in a larger Turing machine uh, that will decide this language. And that's a contradiction because this is undecidable. Okay. Um, okay. Now there's, there's an extra twist. Uh, and that is... Um, now we're, we're going to... Well, I'll get on to the twist in a, 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 an unexpected thing. Now, uh, we're going to uh, reduce from this to this language. Now, it's very similar to what we did before. Before, we reduced uh, ATM to E. Uh, what was it? <laughs> uh, e LBA. Yeah. Okay. So, but now, you know, so now we're going to reduce from this to to this. Okay. So we'll need to find, we'll use the Turing machine R that uh, decides this language and we'll use that, we'll use that machine, Turing machine R, to help us decide this. Okay, that's the, that's the big strategy. And we're going to use computation histories, not surprising. Uh, and here's the twist, actually we have to modify the representation of the computation history. Now before we just had hash signs and the and the configuration uh, yes, sequence of symbols between the hash signs. And this time, uh, for technical reasons, I'll explain later. Um, uh, in fact, we reverse, uh, it doesn't matter. We, 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 have, we have to change the format of the computation history uh, for reasons we'll talk about a bit later. All right, now uh, how to, so we need to, now we need to find he keeps changing his terminology. Now we're talking about a decision procedure. <laughs> a procedure that's sort of like a subroutine uh, or an algorithm or a Turing machine. So in other words, a dis decision Turing machine or a deciding Turing machine, which is just a decider. Okay. Sips and mixes these terms quite a bit. Uh, language, problem, problem, language, decision procedure, in other words, decider. Okay. Um, so how how to use a decider for this language? Because right? that's we have that from the um, basic assumption proof by contradiction. So how how do we use the decider for this language to decide this language? Right? So that's that's similar to the previous 
um, previous theorem. <coughs> so what, what we're going to do now is uh, we, now before we constructed a, a language B, now we're going to construct a grammar, context-free grammar, G. And I'll put two uh, vertical bars here, so what, what I'm about to say is sort of like critical. It's the heart of the proof, the main idea, the idea of the proof. So here's, here's the strategy. So um, we're, going, you know, we're going to construct a grammar, G, and the, what this grammar does, it'll generate all strings, and here's the core idea, okay? it'll generate all strings, if and only if, M does not accept W, does not accept W. And you may ask, why? Where did this come from? Well, as usual, it's ingenious, and you'll see its, uh, you'll see its use, uh, well, probably next board. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you're smart, you may, you may be seeing where this is going or, already, but uh, it's, it's a chain of reasoning, so maybe uh, not obvious uh, for the moment. Okay? All right, so uh, critical, critical words are, so uh, we're going to have this uh, decider for this. It's going to use the decider for this as a part. And uh, so, so the decider for this, let's call it uh, S, yeah, the big machine. It will construct uh, a grammar, G. And this G has the property that, uh, that's the way we set things up. Right. That um, uh, that if uh, hold on. That, that this G will generate all strings if and only if M does not accept W. All right. So what happens if if M does accept W? Now that's an if and only if, right? Uh, therefore, if M does accept W, well, uh, now you have to do a little bit of symbolic logic here. Okay. Now, uh, it's if and only if, so it goes both ways. So, G generates all strings if M does not accept W. And uh, if M does, ex does not accept W, G generates all strings. It's an if and only, it goes both ways, right? Okay, now, uh, so, 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 if M does accept W, that's the negation, so we've got modus tollens, okay? So, uh, now let's, let's say go that way. So we start here and go the other way. Okay, so uh, now this is M does not accept W. Now hold on. Now we'll go, we'll go for this. G, so G generates all strings. Uh, that's from the left and going to the right. Therefore, uh, M does not accept W. But if M does accept W, then use Moden's Tollens. Therefore, we negate the left-hand side here. So it's not the case that G generates all strings. Therefore, there might be one string that it does not generate. Follow that reasoning? Critical. Okay. All right. Well, let... Uh, so if M does not accept W, G, G does not generate some particular string. Okay. That's what I just said. Now, let that string... And here's the, uh, surprise, surprise. Let that string be the accepting computation history. Right. Now, uh, if you start thinking, that's sort of the, the trick. That's uh, like the heart of the theorem. Therefore, G is designed to generate all strings that are not accepting computation histories for M on W. Now, remember, there's only one of them anyway. Yeah? So this G is generating all strings except that one, that one string. And that's, that's the heart of the proof. We can u really use that. Okay. Uh, so how so so to make this grammar G generate all strings that fail to be an accepting computation history, uh, we use the following strategy. Now now it tends to be more mechanics. Now look, I'll go over this again next. Uh, try and clarify it a bit. Uh, also, when it's clear in my own mind, because uh, yeah, it's new new to me. Now, uh, how how can a string fail to be an accepting? Uh, computational history, because this is what this G is doing. It's generating all strings that fail to be of that type. Which type? Well, uh, accepting computation histories, right? strings of that kind. So there's various ways that uh, that uh, you know uh, 
a string uh, is not an accepting computation history. Uh, remember, that's that's the form that uh, uh, an accepting computation history will take. Right? So the, um, conf configs configurations separated by hashes. Okay, and where this configuration, that's the configuration at the ith step, as, as m processes the input w. Right, that's all bad. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, given that the, this grammar G, it'll generate all strings that and a list of things. Well, uh, where this one does not s start, uh, that don't start with the C1, your first your starting configuration. Uh, G will generate strings. Uh, here's another way it could generate strings that don't end with an accepting configuration, where that uh, doesn't have a Q uh, accept in it, stuff like that. And the third way. Uh, is when um, for consecutive configs uh, one does not follow legally from the, the previous one. Okay, so now all right. So uh, I think I think here's the core of the logic. So if M does not accept W, and uh, if M does not accept it, therefore, well, we know that we know this. There's, therefore, there's no accepting computation history. Right? I mean, we know that from uh, earlier. Because what is a, an accepting computation history? Well, it, it happens when M does accept W, right? So if M doesn't accept, does not accept W, there's no accepting computation history. Okay. Therefore, um, so therefore all strings fail one way or another. Either if M does not accept W, then there's you know, this the string an accepting computation history that that string does not exist, but and all the others, uh, the, you know, the G generates. Okay, therefore G would generate all. Hold on. Oh, I see. Therefore, all strings fail in one way or another. So either it fails for a reason that M did not accept W, or it fails because G generates all the non-accepting. Okay, so either way. You've got, uh, let's see, so in, you've got all strings failing if W accepts, M accepts W. So uh, that gives you information, that tells you, uh, that allows you to, um, for S, to make a decision, you can decide, right? So, well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll Go on. I'll, I'll explain this a bit more in detail uh, next session, next board. But I hope you've got the gist of it. Um, the the proof, the proofs, the the tricks that we're using to uh, to to perform the reduction are becoming increasingly ingenious <laughs> and more difficult. In some ways, more fun. But uh, you have to think. Ciao.